Hello, my name is Darren Anstey and I'm the Chief Security Technologist at Arbor Networks. And for the next few minutes, I'm going to be taking you through a quick demonstration of our new advanced threat platform so that you can really see how it can help operational security teams be both more effective and more efficient in what they do. If you do have any questions about this demonstration, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is shown on this slide. Before we get started on the demonstration, though, I think it is important to set the stage a little bit, and it's kind of important to appreciate that the whole advanced threat platform is designed around the workflows where security analysts need to spend a lot of their time. The advanced threat platform is designed to allow analysts to investigate threats much more quickly and easily, really providing them with the ability to zoom, pivot and pan through vast quantities of data at the speed of thought. And this really gives the analyst the ability to follow hunches, find clues and investigate traffic patterns that might represent malicious behaviour and therefore a risk to their business. The advanced threat platform also give out, gives analysts access to the forensic information they need without them having to deploy complex, expensive, slow to use full packet capture solutions. Metadata for detected threats and traffic on the network is available within the user interface and packet capture download is just a button click away. And the advanced threat platform is designed to allow analysts to find threats that might otherwise have been missed using both indicators from the Atlas intelligence feed and also visualizations within the user interface that allow the identification of threat trends or patterns of activity over time. Fundamentally, the advanced threat platform is a product designed to help security do a better job at reducing business risk. So let's take a look at how the user interface um, looks and how the solution works. So this is the landing page for the user interface of the advanced threat platform. And for those of you who saw Prevail Security Analytics, this will look very familiar. However, the advanced threat platform now comprises of three modules, the hunting module, the host dossier module, and the connections module. And I'm gonna be taking you through each of those modules during this demonstration. This is the hunting module, and as you can see, I'm currently in live mode, where the system is presenting the threats detected from either collected flow or packets in real time. The window in the middle of the screen here is known as the main visualization, and everything within the hunting module tracks what's displayed on this page. The tabular data at the bottom of the screen um, alters as I shift my view of what's going on within the main visualization. At the moment, I'm looking at one minute's worth of data from right to left. If I shift to 15 minutes worth of data, you'll see I'm still in live mode. The graph is still tracking from right to left, albeit much more slowly now. But the data at the bottom of the screen alters as I change my zoom. And the real power of the solution is in the speed with which I can navigate through data. If I turn off live stream and zoom out to looking at everything this system has seen since it was first installed, I can see four weeks worth of threat indicator data for this particular network. And I can zoom in from here to an individual minute in pretty much real time. And this ability to quickly change our focus, explore data and view activity over time is really very powerful for the security analyst. I can also look at the data within the hunting module in a variety of different ways. I can look at an overview of events split by um, um, indicator priority, high, medium or low. I can look at indicators broken out by source IP address, destination IP address or indicator type. And as you may have noticed, as I select the different views at the top of the screen here, the table at the bottom of the screen also presents different options. So, for example, if I switch to a destination based view, you'll see I have a different set of options at the bottom of the screen. And again, these all track what's displayed within the main visualization. The main visualization itself is also interactive. If, for example, um, I hover over one of these uh, colored bars here, you'll see I get a pop up which tells me what IP address is represented by this particular color. From this pop up, I can then navigate to the other modules within the solution. I can view a host dossier for this particular IP address, which will pull together both threat indicator and traffic information for that particular host. Or I can drill down to look at detailed connection information for this particular IP address or I can opt to filter traffic to and from this particular IP address using any Prevail APS devices that are integrated with the advanced threat platform. 
So the system is very good at allowing me to explore data um, and explore threat activity over time very quickly and easily. So that as an analyst, I can really see what's going on within my network. But how do I use this to find threats? Well, there are a number of different ways in which I can do this. Firstly, I can use the search tools within the product. When I click on the magnifying glass here, I get my search pop up. I can see the top items in each of these different categories. And again, these track what's displayed within the main visualization. But I can also type in names of threats here. So if, for example, I was concerned that maybe um, Angler had made it onto my network, I could type Angler in here. The system would then tell me if any threats had been detected that included that particular piece of text. And I would then be able to limit my view to those particular threats and really understand exactly what had been going on. So that's one way I can find threats of interest. An alternative is to overlay trends onto the main visualization. I have the ability to overlay trend lines onto the main visualization, showing things like uh, trends in new threat indicators detected within the network, new sources of threat activity, new destinations of threat activity. And this kind of trending information is hugely useful when I'm hunting because it can alert me to areas of the network where there are changes that might warrant further investigation, which might in turn allow me to uncover threats that would otherwise have been missed. And then the third way in which I can find threats of interest is by looking for indicators from the Atlas Intelligence Feed. The Atlas Intelligence Feed, as you all know, is produced by Arbor's ACERT team. And it's a high fidelity intelligence feed that allows our customers to pick up critical threats within their networks by leveraging both Arbor's research capabilities and also the global view of traffic that we get from Atlas. So as a user of this system, if I see an Atlas intelligence feed indicator firing within my network, this is something I should be pretty concerned about. In this particular case, I can see one occurrence of an AI, AIF indicator firing. So let's limit my view and zoom in to see what's going on there. So if I switch to an indicator based view, and then I hover over this particular indicator, I can see that this is PlugX, which is a modular backdoor. And if I was an analyst looking at this on my particular network, I'd be very concerned about um, this particular kind of threat. What I'd want to do at this point, though, is see if the host involved in this particular threat had been involved in anything else, see if there's anything else going on. And I can do that very quickly and easily by simply selecting the host and deselecting the threat. Let's zoom in so we get a more granular view of time here. And what I can see now is that there's a cluster of threat activity around this particular host. This may not seem like I've done very much, but in a lot of solutions, zooming and pivoting through data in this way is both complex and very time consuming. And this is a very powerful way of navigating through data for the security analyst. At this point, as an analyst, I'd be fairly concerned. And, you know, I can see multiple threats grouped around this host. And what I really want now is more detail around those threat indicators. And that's what I can get from the analysis tab. The analysis tab gives me access to a decode for each detected threat very quickly and very easily without my needing to access another tool, use Wireshark or anything like that. Here, for example, I'm seeing that there's a potential VSFTB decompromise from one host within my network to another within my network. So this might potentially indicate lateral movement. I can look at a decode for this particular threat and I can quickly see if I look at the packets here that the smiley face has been used to trigger the back door within the compromised VSFTPD. At this point, I'd be very, very concerned as an analyst and I can get a PCAP for this particular threat as well um, so that I have forensic information so that I can dig down more deeply if that's what I want to do. So the solution has given me the ability to zoom and pivot through data from multiple weeks or months down to seeing individual threats and seeing decodes for those individual th threats very quickly and very easily. And this is pretty unique. But what I want now as an analyst is to have a more detailed view of what my compromised host has been doing from both a traffic and a threat perspective. And this is where the host dossier module really comes into play. And I can quickly navigate to a host dossier for this particular IP address simply by selecting the link and then going to view host dossier.
So this is the host dossier for the IP address 50.7.28.73. And the host dossier is designed to pull together both threat indicator information around the host and also traffic information for that host so that we can see a complete picture of a host's activities on our network. I can see traffic into or out of the host and I can see where the threat indicators that have been detected map into that traffic profile. If I open up those threat indicators, I can get additional information about the threats that have been detected and the top destination that, that, that is also involved in that particular threat along with this host. At the bottom of the page, I then have what's called a Sankey diagram, which shows me a graphical representation of the sessions into and out of the host that's in focus. This is a little bit broken for scans at the moment, um, but this is something we're working to resolve um, in the next release. And what you're seeing here is a scan. If I select one of the IP addresses displayed on the left hand side here, you'll see a particular session into and out of this host. And if I select different aspects of this Sankey diagram, I can see information on the ports that are in use and the amount of traffic that's being transferred into and out of this particular host. The hosts that are communicating with 50.7.28.73 are displayed here on the left hand side of the Sankey diagram and you'll see little coloured bars next to these hosts and that indicates that there's a threat associated with those hosts. What brought me to this host dossier was the use of this compromised VSFTPD here um, between 50.7.28.73 and the .85 address potentially indicating lateral movement, especially given that we saw the smiley face being used within the metadata of the analysis tab. What I want to see now, though, is what's going on around the .85 address. And I can quickly pivot my host dossier view from .73 to .85 simply by selecting the link. I'm now looking at a host dossier for 50.7.28.85. And again, I can see traffic into and out of the host and the threat indicators that have been detected. Again, I could display the Sankey diagram. There is a scan being indicated here again, which is not being rendered quite correctly. But I can also see that there is communication with a host in Korea. And then I can hover over the various aspects of this particular communication to see how much traffic is actually involved in this communication. I can see there's been roughly one megabyte downloaded from this host but I can see that there's been a gigabyte of traffic uploaded to this host. And this would be a key concern to me as a security analyst, because at this point, it looks like there has been an initial compromise within my environment. It looks as if there's been some lateral movement. And now it looks as if there's been some level of data exfiltration to a host outside of my network. At this point, I can go further to look in more detail into the connections that are involved in this particular communication, simply by going to View Connections. So if I start the search here for this particular um, set of data, this will take um, a few seconds to run. So while we wait for that, um, let's just recap on what we've done here. We've used the hunting module to identify a threat of interest within our network. We then used the hunting module to zoom through data, uh, pivot through data to understand that there were a number of different threat indicators around a host. We then used the analysis tab within the hunting module to get a more detailed view of each of those threats. And we've been able to see metadata and extract a PCAP for the solution so that we have background forensic data. We've then looked at a host dossier for the host in question, allowing us to identify traffic into and out of that host and see how the threat indicators map into that traffic profile. And now we've moved on um, after pivoting to another host within the environment, viewing a host dossier there, to look at a more detailed view of the connections that might represent data exfiltration. And here we can see an FTP uh, or two FTP sessions being responsible for that data leaving my organization to that host in Korea. So hopefully over the last few minutes, I've given you a good overview of the advanced threat platform and how the interface can be used to really get very rapid, very easy access to both traffic and threat indicator data for a network. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address was on the first slide of this presentation. Thank you very much.